Hey, 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 it's Daddy Steve. Please like and subscribe. Please click on the Deck Heroes icon. Click on subscribe. It's 100% free. Blood in, blood out. <laughs> and also, don't forget to click on the notifications just so you don't miss out on any amazing content from us from rainy London. Anyway, um, one of the things I wanted to do was remove this kind of miscommunication between men and women. Blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a gentleman who's going to give a statement. Um, I think it's quite a safe statement. Um, and then there's um, some commentary about what he says from the narrator straight afterwards. Now, listen to what he says. See if there's any flaws in it. And then we're going to listen to what the narrator says and the logic of how she interprets uh, this gentleman right here. Let's go. As a woman calls herself independent, that's a red flag to me. We don't like independent women. We do like self-sufficient women, but there's a major difference between the two. We don't mind self-sufficiency. A woman that has her own career, her own place, cars, money, businesses, we don't mind that. But the minute you start to idolize your independence is where we see red flags because there's a certain spirit that comes along with that. It's the, I don't need anybody paradigm. Let's flip it. How would women feel if they met a man and every time he spoke, he sounded like, I pay my own bills and they're all in my name. I live on my own. I don't need nobody. She'd probably say like, bro, you're an adult. You're supposed to, you're supposed to do that. Like, are you good? Like, is there a chip on your shoulder? Like, but even deeper to the point, I'll never make my woman feel like I don't need her. Can you imagine how I would look to a woman who liked me if I walked around shouting how independent I am or how I don't need anybody? Like, imagine how that would make her feel. Nah. I'm waking up every day and reassuring her that I want her, I desire her, and I need her. I'm not a weak man for admitting I need my woman. But I'm worried that some women are so attached to that independent teaching that they're going to independent themselves right into a lonely life. Or worse, form an attachment but still perceive the relationship through an independent field of view. Another day, another, I don't even know, Scott. Listen to what he said. Uh, I'll tell you how I interpreted it. I mean, everybody's going to look at it differently. This lady's going to have her own point of view. I will go I will go back a little bit just so we don't miss anything that she's got to say. And also with accents, I'm really bad with accents. So yeah, this needs to be at regular speed just so I can follow what is said. And thank goodness for the subtitles. That's a me thing, it's not her thing. Um, I think what he was saying was uh, he, he, he likes... He does like independent ladies. It's just that if she's coming with the energy that she doesn't need him... If you come in, if you come in with the extreme where you've got the energy that you don't need your man, you don't need your partner, and that's your day to day, then you get, you're just going too far. That's it. And he contrasted that by saying that this is a bit I don't agree with him. He said that he he needs his partner. He wants and needs his partner. I don't think either side need each other, but you know we actually do genuinely want from our core. We do kind of more consciously want to be with people at the beginning and then with our hearts over time with the L word. <laughs> anyway, obviously, well not obviously, but I've seen this through one time. At, I think I've watched the first five minutes of this. And uh, let's see how this lady interprets what this gentleman has just said. Sells right into a lonely life or worse. I do. I think the thing that sh I don't. Let's see what she says form an attachment but still perceive the relationship through an independent field of view another day another i don't even know scum trick i don't know so now they don't have a problem with independent women but they want you to call it self-sufficient because that's what adults do making your own money buying your own place being able to take yourself on trips and being able to afford a certain kind of lifestyle these are luxuries Okay, so if a woman is living a luxurious life and she says she's an independent woman and it makes you feel some type of way, the problem is you, my guy, the problem is you. She's not going to change that so that it makes you feel a bit more comfortable because if she says she's an independent woman, it's a red flag. But if she says, oh, I'm a sufficient woman, that will stroke your ego. That's what you want to hear. I want you to say, oh, I'm a sufficient woman. I don't want you to say, oh, I'm an independent, because that's too emasculating, because I can do that too. Can you? This reminds me of one of my very... No, let's, let's, let's jump in there. These are the catchwords, which I think is kind of leading people astray and, say, putting the energy... Or wrong. I don't know if his energy. I don't know why 
or how we got drawn into this whole kind of independent critique of ladies because that's always going to have a little bit of pushback but I'm, I'm certain he went to the United Nations and he was trying to draft something which he thought w w had the kind of the right energy in, in as much as again just very quickly that he, he actually does like independent ladies but just not if their energy is that they don't need him at all it's almost like you're, you're uh, yeah, he's just not needed. And again, he contrasted that as if a man came into the room every day, like, hey, I don't need you. I mean, what do I need you for? If you come in with that, what do I need you for energy, that's not because he's feeling emasculated. It's because you've got two men in the room, basically. <laughs> and there's, there's no real femininity there. And there's no kind of man-woman connection in terms of becoming a unit. You're two individuals. In, in, the, in the absolute sense. And of course, it's literally two individuals. And, you know, there's going to be a little bit of in, independence between the two. But you, you're not really on the same journey. You kind of... Somebody's trying to clash with you or something. Trying to push against. That's what he's trying to say, I think. Um, he wasn't in mask. Let's, let, let's hear what she says one more time before she goes into the second part. Because... Um, I just find, I find it, again, shocking how... Uh, the lack of, and I say I'm not criticizing this lady as such. I've just I've heard this type of thing before, but there's a a lack of I don't know if empathy is the right word, but you just can't see through somebody else's eyes and just see the logic of things without feeling kind of pushed against or attacked. But I think it was that kind of uh, the critique of the word independent woman, which has already been drilled into people's brains that. Well, the patriarchy is trying to take something away from you, like it's some kind of battle, I think. But uh, I don't want to read too much into it. But anyway, that's my first impressions. One Life, more time. Or worse, form an attachment, but still perceive the relationship through an independent field of view. Another day, another, I don't even know, scam, trick, I don't know. So now, they don't have a problem with independent women, but they want you to call it self-sufficient because that's what adults do. Making your own money, buying your own place, being able to take yourself on trips and being able to afford a certain kind of lifestyle. These are luxuries, okay? So if a woman is living a luxurious life and she says she's an independent woman and it makes you feel some type of way, the problem is you, my guy. The problem is you. She's not going to change that so that it makes you feel a bit more comfortable because if she says she's an independent woman, it's a red flag. But if she says, oh, I'm a sufficient woman, that will stroke your ego. That's what you want to hear. I want you to say, oh, I'm a sufficient woman. I don't want you to say, oh, I'm an independent, because that's too emasculating, because I can do that too. Can you? What he was... I missed something, actually. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, what he was saying was celebrating that you can do... Celebrating that you can look after yourself is nothing to shout about. That that's that's what you're meant to do. That's all he was saying as well. Um, I, I don't I don't think she meant that. Anyway, let's see what she says in the second part. This reminds me of one of my very first videos, and it the title was "Why Some Men Envy Women," and this lady was talking about how men see money. And the video I'm going to insert it here. It doesn't matter for a man who's financially stable, because I will say to you. Men look at money as power, and men like to have a lot of power. A man who has a lot of money is powerful. So when he sees someone edging towards him who has more money or also has money, it's like a power conflict. And at that being a woman, that's already to them, it's like taking a hit, right? Think about it. Wow. So money, men value money, and therefore if another woman has money, then that's, that's conflict. Wow. Why, why would it be conflict anyway? Why would that be the key thing? I mean, that's interesting. I mean, I'm a, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if she has brothers. I'm, she's obviously got a dad somewhere <laughs> out there. And um, to, to kind of, to, to think that that's what men, do, do, do people, let's just run this through. Do, do men, are men bothered by appearance? presentation, 
sex appeal, um, and then more or less intrinsic qualities about whether you are feminine and uh, just good company to be around. What, what, in what way would a woman's money impact a man at all? Now think about the late great Kevin Samuels now. If a woman had a billion pounds, that's not going to impact a man because she's not going to spend it on him most of the time. Men have men spend their money on ladies. I've been out with plenty of ladies who earn more money than me, and they still expect me to have that traditional. I'm going to pay the way, and it's like, gosh, man, you're on like twice my money. You know what I mean? And I'm not doing too bad, but still, that's. And what I'm saying is, a woman's money makes no difference to a. Say, say she had a million, and I've got half a mil. Who's going to be paying towards the mortgage? It's going to be 50-50 at best, isn't it? It's going to be 50-50 at best. Say if I'm on 750000 and she's on half a mil. Who's going to be taking on the bulk of it? You know, if you contrast that situation, it ain't going to be 50-50. The man's going to be taking on the bulk of it. You know what I mean? It's just it's likely. I'm not saying in every situation, but it just tends to be that way. Again, because regardless of a woman's money, a man usually has to pay still. Occasionally you get people or ladies that want to go 50-50 or prepare to go 50-50. Not always the case. And let's go back a little bit. And I'm not talking about everybody. Please don't shoot me down for that. Uh, let's go to the start. Yeah. It doesn't matter for a man who's financially stable because I will say to you, men look at money as power. And men like to have a lot of power. A man who has a lot of money is powerful. So when he sees someone edging towards him who has more money or also has money, it's like a power conflict. And at that being a woman, that's already to them, it's like taking a hit, right? Think about it logically. If there's a man, if there's two men in the room, what's the number one thing that they're going to compare each other to? Who makes more money? Who has a better car? Who's <laughs> Listen, I mean, I must admit, every time I'm out on a night, every time I'm out with my boys on a night, there's always this woman with long, kind of straight hair. She's kind of like just standing behind us, kind of comparing notes and just listening to what we're talking about. And I wonder what, I wonder who she was. But now I think about it, now I think about it, yeah, it was her. It was her. She was listening to all our conversations. And when I turned around, she was listening to another group of men and kind of comparing notes about what they talk about and kind of what their motivations are. That's absolutely it. So, what, yeah, when men, when men get together, we usually kind of compare each other's money. How much you want, mate? One of the first things that we say. How much you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh, brother, yo, you're doing well, mate. Your salary. Wow. Wow. There you go. In fact, since you're on that kind of money, I think I'm going to stand over there. Does it, come on. What men... I, don't, I mean, I don't really... Men don't overthink things, especially when it comes to other men. It's more kind of uh, instinctive. I think we go back in time. And obviously, I can't speak for all men, but uh, I guess it's just about... Um, just elements of masculinity and threat and then it's just like beyond that and it's kind of like um you're not worthy of respect because of how you present yourself or or you're a little bit edgy and so therefore i need to be kind of on guard and i think that's more or less about it or you're agreeable man so you will laugh so i will entertain this to an extent i mean i don't really want to go too deep into it because men don't think deep about it you know what I mean? But one thing we're not talking about or comparing is money or getting into a money conversation. I've never, I've been, I've known friends. I don't know what money any of my friends are. You've never had one conversation about money. Anyway, let's go. Dress nicer, who has a nicer watch on his wrist, right? Now imagine he has to compete with his woman. He has to compete with a woman. To them, they're already feeling like, and God forbid you make more money than them. Like to them, that's already number one hit. This is the problem, all right? Because they believe that they should be the one with the upper hand. They should have that leverage. They should have that advantage in life so, they, so that they can control you. So they can manipulate you. So they can call the show. That's why a lot of men, when they do a regular nine to five, bring in a regular paycheck, they feel like you should kiss the very ground they walk on. They won't be like, oh, I'm just a sufficient adult. That also explains why most of them won't take part in raising and rearing of their children and the household because they believe they go to work, they come when that's their job, right? So now when they meet a woman who is also doing the same thing, that will make them feel some type of way. Yeah, I get it. That's why you see it as a red flag because you believe that you are supposed to be the only one who is supposed to have this kind of advantage to control the other person because you want a woman who what somebody said in the comment section some time ago you want a submissive provider that's what this is mm -hmm. you want a woman to shut up about her accomplishment while you make a lot of noises and expecting some type of respect when it comes to you and yours so keep shifting the goalposts keep the um, i'm gonna be blind they're also they're already feeling like 
and got and we're gonna rewind we're gonna have to break down like this is a first viewing first viewing of this section I'm going to break down the logic structure and the lack of foundations in those assertions that were made and the kind of guesswork, the negative guesswork which we've just heard. Let's go. Not from her, from the narrator. One hits. This is the problem, all right? Because they believe that they should be the one with the upper hand. They should have that leverage. They should have that advantage in life so, they, so that they can control you. They believe they should have that upper hand, that leverage so they can control you. That's another assertion based on no foundation. It's that kind of fear-mongering mindset. And I don't know what life this young lady has come from that has kind of gave, given her that perspective. And um, I do feel an element of empathy that, say, her lived experience has brought her to that. Hopefully it's not just watching other kind of videos, toxic videos on YouTube that's brought her to that conclusion. But, um... Yeah, uh, that's that, that's a worrying start. But anyway, let's go. So they can manipulate you, so they can call the show. That's why a lot of men, when they do a regular nine to five, bring in a regular paycheck, they feel like you should kiss the very ground they walk on. They... If that is the type of men in her left lived experience, I'm not talking about her brothers or whatever or what you know. If that was, and I can understand to an extent why this, I say this is the experience that she wants to kind of relate, you know, kind of broadcast to us all but if those are the men that she's meeting then she's meeting the wrong men or she's meeting them in the wrong place and there's definitely or yeah you know even if that means listen if that literally meant that every single man on mass has this kind of toxic mindset and presentation where she is then you've got to move full stop and i don't believe it for a second it's like me saying that all women out there are kind of some negative traits it would be no mate it's kind of it would be something to do with me. It can't be everybody, right? It can't be me. The only thing in common would be me, or the only thing in common in this instance would be her. And it's just not the case. It's just not true. It won't be like, oh, I'm just a sufficient adult. That also explains why most of them won't take part in raising and rearing of their children and the household, because they believe they go to work, they come when that's their job, right? So now when they meet a woman... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is... Okay, I don't want to go too deep. I don't know. Where, where do we get to this? Also, that's the foundation. So if a man goes to work, he gets up early in the morning, he goes to work, and then he comes back home at night, and then he starts the night shift, kind of rearing the kids. So he's doing the rearing and the working, and she does the, the, the what? I mean, um, wow. Wow. Uh, and I'm not saying even that he wouldn't want to have some, some role in his life, but um, I think he deserves a break at some point, right? Is this meant to be a partnership? At some point, those kids are going to go to school and nursery, and whilst they're there, I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to get too drawn too, too deep into it because I say this has done the left turn, but in no way does him going to work and coming home and just wanting to have some time out make him... Anything that what you describe. Anyway, let's move on. Who is also doing the same thing? That will make them feel some type of way. Yeah, I get it. That's why you see it as a red flag because you believe that you are supposed to be the only one who is supposed to have this kind of advantage to control the other person. Because you want a woman who would. Somebody said in the comment section some time ago, you want a submissive provider. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. You want a woman to shut up about her accomplishment. You want a submissive provider. In you want a submissive provider? Um, okay, you want a submissive, I understand, to an extent from what she said. That's not what any man has said. That's not what the first video said. That's not what he said. He said he wants somebody who's independent, but just not saying that they don't need their partner. That's what he was saying. Submissive and a provider. No, he would be the submissive provider. He's the provider, right, from what she just said, where she's at home and he's the one that's working full-time. If he's the one that's working full-time, he's the provider, and he would have to be submissive in order to kind of do that, and then come home and then do a night shift looking after the kids, basically working 24-7. Works, works the wrong words when it comes to your own kids, but you know what I mean? But he, he's having to... He, he don't get a break, basically. You know what I mean? He can... He can be involved with these kids and should be involved with these kids after he's done a full day's work. But I'm going down a rabbit hole here, aren't I? 
he would want to be involved with his kids, of course, when he comes home. But as I say, they're meant to be sharing these responsibilities. One does the work, one does the kids, that's right. And, but both have a role. And in fact, if anything, then it would be like, why is he, if this is going to go down this route, he goes work full time. She looks after the kids, but as soon as the kids are self-sufficient or as soon as the kids are at school most of the day, why isn't she doing some at least some part-time job? And then if you're both kind of maximising on the work and the support for the kids, fair enough. But we get into the point already that the kids are already self-independent and becoming more independent over time. So why isn't she working full-time? We don't mean that. Oh, you make a lot of noises and expecting some type of respect when it comes to you and yours. So keep shifting the goalposts, keep gaslighting women, keep renaming and rebranding. Anywho, let's get into some of the responses and I'm going to come back in. <sighs> These keywords. Oh my gosh, man. Um, <laughs> was that guy gaslighting anybody at all? Um, I'm pretty, I'm certain there's guys out here who watched that video, the one that she just presented and had none of the conclusions that she came to. But if you do have those conclusions and you also agree that he was gaslighting, you please put it in the comments in a respectful way. I'm trying to be respectful. I just, just break it down, please, in the briefest terms, <laughs> how he was gaslighting anybody. And I think I've already qualified my understanding of what he was saying. So if he was saying something different, please let me know. Talk some more and leave your own thoughts and opinions in the comment section because English is not my first language, so maybe I'm misunderstanding what he said. All right, let's get into it. Thank you. There's a certain spirit that comes along with that. It's the I don't need anybody parent. Okay, so he went on to continue to say a bunch of other nonsense about how he does it. Um, he would never make his woman feel like he does. But you want to know what I find is always missing from this independent woman conversation and the men that make videos talking about this? I never hear them say all the things that a woman could depend on them for. Like, the, the conversation never gets that far. Like, the men who complain about women being independent and, you know, women not need no man or whatever, the conversation is never because, you know, I'm looking for a woman that I can provide her every need and her every want. I'm looking for a woman that I can retire and, you know, take out of that job. I don't want that woman working. You know, I'm looking for a woman where she don't barely have to drive if she don't want to. I'll take her where she needs to go. I'm, like, you just don't hear the, the next part of the conversation. And it reminds me of when... Hold on. That's because no man ever would ever want to do that. I think you're in the wrong country. You have to go Saudi for that or something like that. You know what I mean? But I think those are the oppressed ladies. It's not the modern Western man's mindset to want any of those things or want to provide any of those things. And I'm not talking about everybody. I know there's going to be some isolated examples, but majority of men don't mention it ever because that's the last thing that they would want to do. I think some women want to be... I don't want to get drawn into it. <laughs> I'm just going to get drawn into this nonsense anyway let's see what she said one more time i went back at uh, 10 seconds just so we don't miss anything woman working you know i'm looking for a woman where she don't barely have to drive if she don't want to i'll take her where she needs to go i'm like you just don't hear the, the next part of the conversation and it reminds me of when lizzo made that song and she said why men great till they gotta be great and so many women related to it because what i find this whole independent woman conversation to boil down to is that a lot of men want women <laughs> So I don't even know that song, but we were, we were, we were kind of referring back to the late, well not the late great, the great Lizzo. We, I must admit the great Lizzo, the scholar. Wow, that's true actually, Lizzo. Ever so often well I'm in doubt, I said, what would Lizzo do? You know what I mean? I'm kind of thinking about something real life critical. She said, what would Lizzo do though? Yeah, that's Lizzo. Why don't, why, don't, why don't I just come to that straight away? I should know this already. That shows how little I know. Put Lizzo's album back on and we'll, we'll, and I'm making fun, but anyway, it just kind of took me out for a second. Let's go. I'm going to go back again. Sorry, let's go. I mean, related to it, because what I find this whole independent woman conversation to boil down to is that a lot of men want women to be so dependent and reliant on them until women actually depend and rely on them. Because these are the same men that complain about paying for dates. These are the same men that complain that everybody's a gold digger. These are the same men that complain that all these women want is your money. All these women are looking for is your money. These are the same men that complain that, oh, these women, you know, wouldn't even be able to survive without a man, blah, blah, blah. But like they complain about women actually needing them. So it's like you want women to be in this state of uh, dependence and reliance upon a bunch of people who can't be depended on. A bunch of people who can't be relied on because the minute you actually need them, it's a. 
Like you, you, you finished up saying that men want you to be dependent upon them, but you started off saying that men never get into the conversation about them wanting you to be dependent on them by providing all these things. And it can't be both things. It can't be both things. They could... Poof. Do men either have these conversations where they constantly kind of insist that they want you to be dependent on them, which is the opposite of what you said, and then not follow through? Or do they never say it, and then they never they never follow through because they never provide it because they never said they were going to do it in the first place? Gosh. Problem. The minute, oh, you, you need me to pay your light bill. How are you paying that light bill before you met me? But you need to be needed so bad until somebody actually needs you. So maybe instead of complaining about why so many women are so independent and they don't need a man, which mind you, I don't even hear women in real life actually saying this. Like women are just doing their own thing. Like they're being independent. They're taking care of themselves. But ain't nobody walking around here talking about, I'm a strong independent woman who don't need no man. Like that's, nobody's really saying that. Like be so for real. Women are just taking care of their stuff. They're buying their own houses. They're getting their own careers. They're getting their, they're doing what they, what they need to do to take care of themselves. It ain't really got much to do with the man. But I'm pretty sure if you are that guy that comes into that woman's life and shows her that you can be depended on, that you can be relied on, not just when it's convenient for you, but when she actually needs you, that you actually will show up, you will actually be reliable, you will actually be dependable, that woman would have no reason to be walking around calling herself a strong, independent woman. Why would she? So stop complaining about it and maybe work on being that guy that a woman could depend on and you won't have no problems with an independent woman. There's an idea. Towards the end of that original video that I said, that, as I said, as, it's pointless to me. I've already made the point. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say about that, really. It's just, it had no logical foundations. It's just somebody's got a point of view about something and then just trying to make something else fit, but it didn't fit. There's nothing else to say about it. Um, very interesting anyway. I think, I think there's something to try to unpick the, the kind of confusion sometimes and, and may, maybe there was something else which may have been a better example that she then you know what I mean that she could have presented or maybe there's nothing there at all I think person there's nothing there at all but if she had a better example maybe eventually we'll get to a video where there's a really good example of something and then we can drill down and say okay yeah okay but until that day I guess we are where we are anyway please like subscribe daddy Steve and I am out